The next thing to do after the quilt has been sewn to its lining and flipped and then pressed is to add these centering guidelines and these fold to lines. I'm going to use a template, my centering template, to do that. And the reason I'm using a red one instead of a green one is uh, there's not as much glare from light. Red ones are available, but they're a special order because most of the time green is the preferred color. Let me show you how this works. You take your um, back that's lined and you position the centering template as close to this top edge as you can. And then you look at the numbers. If it's number three over here, it has to be number three over here. And then you simply use a um, marking pen that is temporary for fabric to mark the dots. I also mark these lines because they give me a good indication of where to place double-sided quarter-inch washable basting tape if I have to use it when I'm turning under the edges. Notice that this corner is a little distorted because I pulled the fabric through to the right side using this stay stitched area. If you line up the centering template and you mark the center, that won't make any difference. It really um, doesn't impact the outcome of how your quilt square will look. So go ahead and just mark it using the same rules as the other areas where you place the top of the centering template at the top of your fabric and the sides of the centering template so the same number reads on each side. After I've installed my centering dots, I'm going to actually use a ruler and join the top dots to one another. And this will be my stitching line. And many times I do not um, actually go right to the very dot. I kind of leave a space, but it's, you know, a personal choice. So when I'm finished this, all of the blocks that I'm using are going to have a stitching line, centering, centering guides, and they're also going to have this line, which indicates where you fold the beveled edges down to meet when you're going to turn the edges, the corners.